So this is the Night Patrol deck. I've always been a big fan of Devastator. The thing that gets me frustrated about playing with the Constructicons is if my opponent goes first, there's a good chance they can knock out Bone Crusher, who only has one armor and four life, before you have a chance to transform Scrapper and start building your tower. Then you're stuck as a five wide. So this deck gives my five smallest characters stealth and then Night Racer is the target that my opponent has to go into first. She takes 13 to kill, so unless I'm running against an ambitious Thrustimus deck, she should be able to survive. From then on, I can put in the damage turn by turn. So, none of these characters are going to survive more than one shot, and that's fine. We've reached a point in the game, I think, where you can actually fill your deck entirely with black icons and have it stand a chance. So this deck is all black, and white. There are orange icons too, but only orange that includes black on it. So the main goal of this deck, being a six wide, is to allow your opponent to go first, they're forced to send into Night Racer, and then you have a chance of waiting for an end round with maybe three or four characters left over. If you're particularly lucky and you're fighting against Fortress Maximus, uh, man, it's ugly. So. We want to play cards that are going to take advantage of that end run attack. We have Heat of Battle and Designated Target. Heat of Battle gives you a chance to flip over more black icons and applies to everyone. You can also flip over more orange. Designated Target, of course, gives everyone Pierce 2. So again, if you flip into orange cards, it ups the Pierce value and the damage total that you're doing. So, since we need some orange icon cards, we're going to have Precision Fire. There's not a lot of transformation in this deck. Most of the time you're in alt mode, which means you really get to take advantage of your opponent's transforming when precision fire comes into play. Similarly, there's only one Autobot, and the goal is to send him out first before Sky Shadow gets any ideas. Just let him die in combat, like a Klingon. So there is Magnetic Dysfunction Array. Do a damage to each character, and then another damage to each Autobot. The rest of the patrol are safe. We've got a combat dagger, well, a set of combat daggers. We've got the orange and the black on there. This is the one card in the deck that I'm not super stoked about as a playable card. The bold one is not worth a lot, but it's worth it having the orange and the black in there. And then of course we have fight for position. Give a single character bold two for a turn. This can get a little interesting when you combine it with nitro boosters. Every character in this deck is three attack base. Where did High Jump go? There he is. Night Racer can transform for four, but most of the time, again, you're not worrying about transforming her. So, Nitro Boosters played on one of these characters can give them two uses out of the fight for position, or out of the heat of battle, or the designated target. And while we're going for these end round attacks, we want some attack to take advantage of the black icons that we flip over. So, looking at our weapons, we have Crystal of Power. You're never looking at the armor, you're just looking at the plus three attack, but it's a nice plus three black icon. Then we have a great card, Fusion Borer. This doesn't have to be combined with end run cards, it just gives you the Pierce three automatically. This is maybe the best card in the deck. Um, similarly, I'm going to deviate from the weapons for a moment. We have our Calculated Strike, and this gives you plus two attack and plus two Pierce. These two go hand in hand. Uh, and then for weapons, Kinetic Intensifier Whip. This gives you an automatic plus one attack, and then it gives you the bold two. You do have to transform a character to do it, but again, these characters don't survive more than one shot anyways. So you transform, they die, and that's that. You send out Hyperdrive and Detour first because they're both specialists, so that as you get towards the end of the game, you can also look at these Sturdy Javelins. It's nice to have some direct damage to throw at people, specifically if you haven't destroyed them on your way attacking. You can also just send Sturdy Javelin into the character you're attacking, and that's fine. It doesn't say Pierce on here, but compare Sturdy Javelin to Calculated Strike. Notice this one gives you plus two attack and plus two Pierce. This doesn't say attack or Pierce, but since the total is two damage, they're very comparable. It's like the same thing. But this one can go after anyone you want to, so that's great. Uh, while we're looking at direct damage, we have Kami and Crash. Do a damage to one of your characters, do two damage to your opponents. This is just fine because, again, none of your characters is going to survive more than one attack, except for Night Racer at the beginning. 
So sure, do a uh, damage to one of your guys and then just watch it disappear because they're dead. On that note, because people like dying in this game, like Night Flight and Storm Cloud, we have erratic energy grenades. Uh, your opponent might have something to scrap your utilities, and that's fine, but it's worth giving this a shot because if they do have to go into your tapped character and there's no way that they can stop themselves from having enough attack to destroy them, you're doing two damage to each opponent, which is nuts. It's like Sturdy Javelin times a billion. The last card in here is one little hold the line. This is basically for a Night Racer if we find ourselves turning over at another round and maybe there's a Titan Master head involved. If they're small enough, Night Racer might survive. What this really comes down to though is you have a green icon secret action. So pull this and then at the end of the round, if you don't have your heat of battle or your designated target, at the very least you can throw down a secret action and Night Racer transforming can get bold one to each of the characters. It's a small boon, but it might uh, just sort of push things over the edge. So this deck, uh, this is the only green icon that we have to worry about. I feel like every card in here is basically a top deck. Each card in here is something I want to play once I have it, so I'm not fishing for anything. Again, the only card I'm worried about is Combat Dagger. Um, it's The bold one is not a lot going on, but the fact that it can be bold one, and that's sort of the way this deck is leaning, just sort of convinces me into it. I know I'm leaving a lot of orange-black cards that are possible out of here, like Rock Toss, but doing one damage isn't quite as good as using the Kamian Crash or the Sturdy Javelin. I'm not a huge fan either of the Wedge Formation. I know that people see a lot of uses for it. For me, I don't see much value in planning in this deck if every card is going to be black or white to get the blacks off. Um, I don't really want to draw one card. I'd rather just have the card that I would have drawn otherwise. And this deck is not about repairing, so none of that. Uh, yeah. So there we are. This deck is aggressive. It's just aggressive in pieces. The average amount of damage you're going to do is about four each attack. Um, it's hard, believe it or not, to play a weapon and an action every single turn because you have so many different characters. But, again, if you're going against very tall decks, you might get in a really nice end-of-the-round attack. And then, after you've done your about 24 damage from the six characters, it's a race in the second round to see who can do what. Um, if you haven't taken control of the situation by then, Night Racer is probably going to die on the uh, second round. That's okay. This deck does obviously really well against tall decks, um, Ultra Magnus and Optimus Prime, or Fortress Maximus. Um, I haven't tested it against Metroplex, which is supposedly a one tall, but obviously sends out the minions. Similarly, we have Trypticon, uh, that's untested. I have found against a four wide that it came one damage away, but that does seem to be a particular weakness because for the most part, with four characters on your opponent's side, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your characters uh, and still knock them out each single turn and leave you with much less of an end run at the end of the turn because maybe you have two characters left untapped. Uh, that does mean this deck is a little weak against wide Sky Shadow builds, which is a problem because Sky Shadow is very popular and for good reason. But... I'm not ready to give up on this deck. I think it's worth a lot of testing, and there may be some more tricks than it first appears. Yeah. Okay.